recording. Yep. Okay, fellas. So this is where I am at right now. <laughs> and uh, that's the bike that got me here. So uh, today's video is going to be a long one. You better take some time off your busy schedule and uh, watch. So this, this video is going to be about all the mods that I've done to make this ride, to make this bike comfortable. I mean, this is a part two of the mods video. I started my YouTube channel with my mods video and so this is going to be a, a take two of the same. But uh, this is about almost a year later. There have been some newer additions to the motorcycle and there's a lot of tweaking that I've done. There's a lot of fine tuning that I've done. There's a lot of corrections that I've done to the motorcycle just to make it a little more trustworthy and uh, to be able to take on the miles, you know, keep munching miles. That's what's more important, isn't it? A motorcycle that you can trust and take off-road, take on-road, take to long distances without worrying about uh, bits and pieces going wrong in the middle of the, the, middle of the uh, journey or the trip. To start with, to begin with, first things first, I have a, a knobby tire, this is strictly off-road, uh, but if you learn to ride along with these knobbies, if you if you just get the hang of it, then these, you can manage uh, with them on the highways as well. Not much of a problem, it's just that when you slow down, you will have that, you know, you'll have, you'll feel the knobbies. You will definitely feel them because uh, they are not as uh, smooth um, as uh, a normal tarmac tire would be a regular road tire would be so that's the only downside but once it starts gaining speed uh, things just uh, are uh, almost the same yes they are a lot more louder than the regular tires because of all these pockets these pockets trap air and it's like they keep they keep cracking these air uh, bubbles as when they as when the tire touches the t uh, the uh, road surface because of these pockets of uh, because of these pockets air gets trapped and they get they kind of they burst this bubble they keep doing that loud noise so over a uh, you know a long I mean it, it doesn't bother you in the beginning but then over a long period of time let's just say 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers of riding then you get constantly get to hear the ooh noise and that starts to get to your nerves so ride with your plugs on the highway if you have knobblies if not then if you're just doing dirt then these are the best options for you to do, uh, to do uh, dirt these tires can take a max load of 220 kilos so kindly don't overload the motorcycle beyond that and uh, try and if you have knobbies and if you have to load your bike like like mine and you have to do highways kindly see to it that you don't add a lot more of bags here to the front and make it even more heavy so depending on the tire so this, this is a ralco motocross 90 90 21 yeah the profile is 90 uh, the uh, um, uh, width is 90 and the dia is 21 inches so that's the knobbly tire going to this side onto this side i have ebc fully sintered brake pads nothing like sintered brake pads especially especially on highways it's because i mean you cannot even compare the uh, uh, regular organic pads to a sintered brake pad once things start uh, you know becoming uh, hot the once the pads start becoming more and more hot after use the organic pads will start losing their bite meanwhile these guys will perform better and better and better the wear and tear is almost the same but they are a little hard on the rotors so keep a, a check of the width of the rotor uh, uh, you know for for limits wear limits and then once it's lost i mean i'm almost at 4.5 i'm done uh, so i need to change my rotor uh, because they they, uh, they they grab uh, a bunch of the metal of uh, uh, every single time you uh, break and they take away uh, metal faster than the organic pads but definitely provide with much much better braking of course i have balanced my wheel if you guys can see this you will see weights i have made separate videos dedicated videos on all these subjects but i'm just trying to put all of them in into one picture so that you know you can you can now watch this video at a stretch and do all the mods that i've done on my motorcycle on yours as well if uh, it fits you if the the requirements fit you um, so i have balanced my wheel so once you balance your front wheel anyways uh, why did i balance my wheel it's because i changed my tire and these are knobbly tires and i wanted to find out if there was a an issue with the weight balance but it wasn't it was the usual case with the um, uh, the air valve side being heavy so i right opposite to the air valve air valve i managed to uh, stick about 20 grams of weight and that did ba balance my wheel 
yeah so this is uh, this is my mud guard a uh, modified mud guard it's, it's four pieces one two this is the stock uh, upper mud guard or the high fender to which i have attached one one more uh, bit here and then to the rear i have managed to if you guys can see the rear has another attachment which is the which is another fender there is a dedicated video on my high fender mod kindly go and check that out i will definitely mention the links and you will also see that in the i card uh, coming up right now on your screen and uh, there's another last final bit that i've attached to to see to it that you know i i make it as as um, slushed and mud proof as i can at least the chassis coming over to this side i have uh, uh, an hjg uh, uh, spotlight or ox light um again i leave the link to where you want you, you should be getting this from uh this is uh, amber this has an amber uh, cover again so without the amber cover you're good to do roads and with the amber cover you're good to do uh foggy conditions um and maybe a bit of uh, you know i mean of course strictly foggy conditions apart from that i don't think you need amber lights for any particular uh, reason i also have a spotlight up here again this is a spotlight this turns with my folks just so that you know i have that bit showing on the road uh, a chinese aftermarket uh um, product which i initially thought was crap but when i put it to test i've used it for about 20000 kilometers or more 25000 kilometers if i if i can say uh, positively so 25000 kilometers and this fellow has lasted uh, really well it still has the same shine the same throw of course the soldering inside goes off every now and then and i have i have to solder the wires again to the board but that's all right that's all right i don't i don't uh, uh, think of that as a deal breaker i think of that as just something that comes along with buying something 110 the price of the market leader so this i got for about 1000 rupees indian rupees and uh, 1000 or 1500 i don't remember this is not the cheapest one neither is it the most expensive one it's somewhere in between moving over to my headlamp this ring has been painted black custom painted i mean i did the painting part of it i hope that's inside the housing is a cyclops led it's a cyclops 10.0 that is uh, 10000 lumens it's four cree uh, led emitters the top of the line uh, quality led emitters and i have now i've had this on my motorcycle for nearly 15000 kilometers and man oh man nothing like it you go by night eye you go by any crap that's definitely going to start flickering after a point of time uh, from my experience i've had uh, i've tried four uh, led bulbs inside this machine alone and this is the only thing that has lasted uh for this long and without any complaints it still throws it has the same throw as it had on day 1 so if you just want to see that's the low beam and high beam low beam high beam all four cree emitters working in good nick no complaints so yep another tiny mod that i did was if you guys can see this this mounting here i have put two rubber o-rings on both the sides just so that it dampens the uh, the vibration that comes up on the headlamp and and doesn't crack the plastic there's a lot of cracked plastic uh, cases out there this particular uh, portion or this particular headlamp cowl or housing whatever it is that you want to call it these things crack this i think is the worst part on the himalayan uh, this one this this fella this will crack with time and your job is to see to it that you know you don't end up cracking it is because this doesn't sell separately in the retail outlets or the service stations they sell the whole of it as one unit and together with the headlamp and the bulb and all the reflector and everything put together it's 6000 indian rupees what you need to do is you need to see to it that you don't end up cracking this and for that you need to put some two rubber washers rubber washers or just cut a cycle tube into o rings or o uh, in a, a circular shape and then put a hole in between and uh, shove these bolts through and you will have this uh take up the vibration without cracking the plastic that's that moving on to my windshield if you guys can see there's a gopro mount here there is there's an additional attachment of two l clamps that i have managed to attach from this bracket to the uh, windshield again with a rubber o-ring if you guys can see that, that there's a rubber o-ring there so a rubber o-ring two l clamps attached from the bracket that holds the speedometer 
to the windshield again why is because every single time i had a fall i understood uh, one thing that the the first thing that goes flying is my windshield w only because i have this this uh, i think would be 100 grams this is a windshield extender more like a wind deflector attached to the windshield so when i have i have this part this component attached to the top of my windshield the weight is kind of taken on to the top it moves to the top and then what happens when you fall is when you fall this thing kind of shakes uh, rigorously um, and it, it cracks these mounting points uh, three or four windshields I don't remember exactly that I've gone for a toss because of this and so I had to do something about it and this is my genius idea <laughs> if you guys can do a better job please do a better job but i've done two uh, clamps intentionally because i want the force to even if there's a, a force hitting this i want them to move slightly independently so that you know uh, it doesn't end up cracking here even though there's a rubber o-ring i mean i've i've gone and thought this through to some great lengths but i don't know if you truly require for two clamps here you can just be done with one but all said and done, that's what I've done. Uh, another uh, small little addition here is uh, I have managed to take, take, I've taken the rubber inserts that come along with the uh, Royal Enfield bolts and I've replaced the rubber inserts with uh, cardboard washers. Uh, I, the advantage to cardboard washers is that, you know, you can, you can kind of uh, get it to the right torque. You can get it to the right torque and, and it sits there. It just, it, it just sits there without any problems. The rubber with the rubber washers i always had to wonder i mean i always had to retorque it every now and then because moving over to this portion this portion i've already made a video on my handlebar so um, just running you through the whole of it again i have hand guards cheap chinese knockoffs but these things do last i've fallen over thrice with these hand guards and it's just the plastic that goes off goes for a toss uh, if you guys have, um, you know, if you guys have access to just the plastic from somewhere, get the plastics and fit it on. Otherwise, I live in a warm place. I don't really have a problem with just the metal guards uh, saving my levers and saving the uh, saving my fingers in case of a crash. So the knuckle guards without the plastic part of it, just the metal spine. And then moving on to uh, my double take mirrors. These are wonderful. Uh, quite versatile you can flex them you can turn them you can you know you know you know you can do all sorts of things with them uh, go do read about double take mirrors and see if uh, it fits your uh, budget if it does go ahead and buy it is because there's nothing nothing more amazing than having the double take mirrors on your motorcycle uh, anyways uh, uh, this is all a separate video one entire video on the handlebar alone so i'm just going to run through this i have a switch for my uh, spotlight metal switch aluminium switch this has been on the motorcycle for 25,000 kilometers no problems at all a switch for my powertronic ECU map 1 and map 2 I'll talk about this later as well um, I have my 12 volt cigarette lighter charger um, again I leave the links to all of these products in the description you can go ahead and just click on them and it will straight take you to the purchase page you can purchase these things from there no problems i have a cheap chinese ram arm uh, setup here with a charger so the advantage with chinese people is that they have they will always outdo any design that the west makes <laughs> so they've gone ahead and uh, they've, they've tried to copy the ram uh, um, mounting system but they've also uh, generously included a charger and the whole thing comes one tenth the price uh, at one tenth the price of the 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 ram x grip system so <laughs> nothing like that right so uh, a charger five volt charger and a ram arm onto which my mobile sits pretty comfortably like that there you go this again has been on the motorcycle for, for a really long time i did lose the the wiring part uh, once i had to redo the wiring but that was it that was just a one-time uh, episode and uh, it was it still works like a charm i have these ram balls mounted here and there on the machine just so that you know i can mount my camera my gopro uh, if need be and uh, what else what else this is uh, a ktm handlebar a ktm duke 390 2017 edition uh, handlebar 
so why the handlebar is because again there's a video on this but just uh, running you through why the handlebar is because it, it offers a wonderful sweep to the rider and it's it this technically is far more suited for highway riding and long distances than the one that comes stock with the himalayan so this is something that you guys should definitely give it a try very very strong more like a fat bar by that i mean it's kind of wide in the center tapers down to 22 mm the regular size handlebars on both the sides so this would be somewhere around three fourth of an inch or i'm guessing almost uh, one inch and from there it tapers to 22 mm which is the regular universal size handlebar so more like a fat bar style and can can take in any number of falls i've never really had this bend my stock crappy bars will always end up bending and so i had uh, to definitely do something about it and got myself this and this also is very very comfortable on long stretches of highway to make things a little more comfortable for highway riding i have uh, here what you see here is a handlebar riser this is the pivotable handlebar riser uh, what that what i mean by that is it's not it does it offers a, a, a whole lot of uh, adjustments settings for you to have your handlebar uh, positioned uh, at so what i mean by that is you know you you can you can loosen these top bolts and you can move the handlebar front and back i mean you can rotate the handlebar a little more forward for aggressive attacking off road stance and then backwards if you want to really lay i mean sit on your um, uh, you know saddle and cruise for long distances also once you've set that position you can you can adjust it here you can move the entire setup forward and backward so once you are happy with the position of the handlebar you can maybe move it a little more forward and backward so there's 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 umpteen number of adjustments that can go on and you can narrow it down to the to the finest setting and be uh, you know nev never be bothered about the position of the handlebar afterwards 50 rupee <laughs> 50 or 100 i don't really remember uh, this is uh, a replica a chinese replica of the uh, cramp buster cramp buster sell for 1000 rupees or more and this thing sells for uh, this is this is a cramp chinese cramp buster that sells for about 100 rupees so that's one tenth the price again and does the job really well it helps with uh, you know your um, your uh, palm uh, your palm or your just this portion can rest on on uh, the uh, this particular contraption here and you can generate slightly uh, you know you you will have an advantage at the uh, at generating more leverage you you can turn what i mean is you can turn the throttle with lesser force because because you have a little more leverage going in because of this particular structure here again only suited for highway riding makes the whole job simpler and easier this only works one way so if you can see this will rotate only in this direction but if you want to press it in the opposite direction this will take the lever along with it so uh, a, an extremely important and uh, amazing contraption definitely give it a try 100 rupees i'll leave the link you guys can buy and give it a try um so that's the cramp buster cramp buster cramps helps with uh busting cramps what tank bag from rhinox i guess i'm guessing 10 15 liters pretty much has everything that uh, i need on trips i have my gloves from a brand called shield uh from moto gear leave links of all of this this is all weather riding glove uh magnetic tank bag by the way so it holds on to the tank really well i mean of course this has been on the tank for 20000 kilometers or more now 25 22 23000 kilometers so now uh, the magnets are starting to lose their uh, grip over the tank so i have them uh, anchored you know safely with additional straps to my uh, what can i call this my subframe or railing or whatever what do i have here the usual uh, engine guards from uh, royal enfield this is from royal enfield uh, two point uh, mounting system uh, again kind of a deba debatable topic many people say all sorts of nonsense about this but i've always found them to be really really uh, useful is because every time my bike goes down this thing kind of caves in and doesn't really transfer uh, the force or the impact onto any other component and all i need to do is just use my strength to pull it backwards three times or maybe at the most five times and not more uh, five times this goes caving in 
it's high time you swap you change to another uh, set of uh, new ones or, or just get one side if uh, your bike has been falling on one side i have some cap nuts here for the engine uh, stud bolts just so that you know i stop the uh, bolts from rusting uh, i have an ngk uh, iridium cr8 eix spark plug in there i have a split fire uh, uh, ignition cable which has uh, which has little resistance far less than the the stock one uh, again transverse electricity really quickly some research about high performance ignition cables and you will uh, get to know bits and pieces that uh, maybe i have missed out on so this technically keeps my bike running like at the start of the day towards the end of the day as well so uh, a Gro gopro mount here again what else do i have here engine oil that i use is a model semi synthetic 15w50 uh, meets all the specifications and is in my opinion the best engine oil for this particular engine i would not recommend the engine oil for a liquid cooled engine or a high compression engine but for this particular long stroke single cylinder uh, really uh, yb uh, you know uh, engine you you should the best thing that you can use is a semi synthetic and not a fully synthetic a fully synthetic may lead to clutch slippage and you really don't want to get into anything like that we have a brake master cylinder guard yes has come in handy twice uh, no problems i have a red rooster performance muffler free flow free flow muffler with a, a custom uh, db killer uh, what else do i have i have a charging port here a uh, so small charging port here for my uh, tire compressor or air compressor uh this is my dirt sack frogman dirt sack saddle bags i've been using them for a really long time as you can see the condition of them is uh, is definitely poorly i got to give it to these fellows they've managed to pull out something really really good and i have definitely tested them over a uh, over uh, i think some 20 trips now 15 20 trips solid easy and these things have i mean the bags the carriers are starting to wear off but not the uh, uh, welded pvc this this particular thing is just rock solid 100% waterproof that is the reason why i got them in the first place i have a top box from kukes i will try and leave a link to this this is not available anymore in retail outlets so this particular model is a 29 liter and can take a full size helmet uh, but uh, this is not technically available now but any which ways i'll try and see if i can get the link to this particular product it's a top box 29 liter from kukes and uh, the usual saddle stay from uh, royal enfield again pretty solid i had an aftermarket one which couldn't take a lot of crashes it started to bend and cave in but this fellow here is rock solid at the most what happens is that the paint starts to chip off or it starts to rust and that's the usual scene with 90% of royal and field products they start to rust is because of poor metal quality here and there where they where it is not a must so what you need to do is you need to just give it a nice um, scrape with a sandpaper and then go ahead and do your primer and paint and that's it and that's it Again the tail lamp housing has been painted in matte black. I like it that way. I like it far better than the uh, silver color that it comes from from the factory. Uh, what else do we got? I've got some reflectors attached to my uh, number plate and uh, these do come in handy. Uh, they they are standard fitment in the uh, in the bikes that are being exported. Uh, but they don't I don't know why Royal Enfield didn't bother to give us these uh, reflectors. So I just went ahead and I made my own custom setup. I I used a a small L clamp again here to attach this to the number plate. <coughs> What else do I have here? Again, uh, a knobby tire but 50/50. Uh, this is from Timson. Again, a fantastic tire. I can't uh, tell you how good this is uh, in terms of traction on dirt roads. Slightly bigger than my stock uh, Seat. This is a 130-90-17. My stock seat would be 120-90-17. So this technically translates to about seven to eight millimeters of height, 
I mean the seat height goes up by 7 to 8 millimeters but that's all right I mean that's not a big deal 800 mm is the seat height of the Royal Enfield Himalayan and I, I, I never really found that to be uh, high at in any particular way uh, the stock rear the, the brake pads on the rear brake are uh, the usual ones from the factory organic brake pads I haven't gone with uh, um, centered brake pad for the rear one is because the rear ones do offer a real good bite a very good stopping power so never really bothered to go ahead and change the brake pads for the rear what else coming moving over to this side yep RK chain and sprocket the gold chain I, I mean I'm amazed at the quality of this chain when I got it uh, I heard a lot of my friends tell me that you know I shouldn't be going with a 520 on a motorcycle which is supposed which is running a 525 uh, stock that is the pitch of the chain the width of the chain and I did some research did some reading on these fellows RK and 520 uh, chains and I came to know that plenty of plenty of super bikes I mean the big ones the liter class bikes those guys have moved from a 530 to a 520 525 to a 520 um, DID and RK gold chains X ring chains XW ring chains and uh, they all say that these chains are uh, far far better than the ones that come from the factory so anyway so I just thought my my chains and sprocket were on the lim uh, the, uh, the wear and tear limits I had done about 25,000 kilometers with them so I changed to this 3000 kilometers later 3000 kilometers of only loaded riding what I mean is I am all the time with Ashi Ashi where's Ashi Ashi <laughs> so I'm only doing uh, riding with pillion on this chain and it hasn't stretched one tiny bit I set it to spec on day one and it is still the same it hasn't stretched one bit just this trip alone today I have uh, today uh, I have co covered about uh, 1050 kilometers and uh, 1050 kilometers of riding through all sorts of terrain mountainous terrain off-road name it and I've done all that fully loaded motorcycle not one bit I haven't seen a stretch at all from the day I got it till today um, just amazed at the quality of the chain and the sprockets they are as good as new I fantastic chain go ahead and get this you will find that your gear shifts become a lot more smoother with this you will definitely feel that um, the transition from gear 1 to gear 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 you will not find that lag there when you shift from one gear to another with the stock chain there was always a bit of a lag I, I always used to feel oh, oh, I used to feel that lag but with this it just kind of, the, the momentum keeps rolling you know you don't feel that you know you have a bit of power loss happening when you shift gears fantastic lighter chain translates into much better um, feel or so well I have done the uh, testing part of it and I've also given it enough time to uh, talk about it in detail and that's an, um, another um, amazing modification that I've done what else there's a KN air filter inside the air box uh, from uh, day one from day, uh, day one I had a BMC air filter rode it for about 10,000 kilometers gave it to my friend got a KN and ever since I've been running a KN there is a Powertronic piggyback ECU sitting inside this again tried and tested on my third motorcycle this is my third powertronic ECU never really had a problem uh, the ECU has done about uh, on this machine alone has done about 21,000 kilometers so again yep Ashi has pointed out something else uh, side stand extender uh, foot extender so definitely I mean guys if you have Himalayans you would definitely know how notorious these bikes are uh, because uh, or the side stands are because you always end up having the bike fall on its side with uh, because of the side stand because it's a tiny platform and this 200 kilo monster sits on that tiny platform and <coughs> so the best thing to do is go grab yourself uh, an extender and uh, you can park the bike on any terrain without any worries whatsoever what else do I have oh yep <laughs> I think Ashi has a better eye for detail than me um, that's a tank grip again especially for uh, days when you know you have to grip the tank like that if you guys can see yeah so I, I kind of feel my knee on the tank grips and yes I did have my tank tank grip to this size in the beginning but then I understood that I, I didn't really need so much 
is because it's starting to hurt my uh, thighs. Long day of riding. So I finally narrowed it, narrowed it down to just this portion. And now I feel that I need a little more, just a little more. One more bit here, maybe just this much. This much is good enough. I don't really want so much tank grip material here. Especially these uh, uh, knobby ones, you know. If you find the uh, smooth textured rubber ones, then th those are good. But these ones are a little too pricky. They start to hurt your thigh after a long time. Uh, uh, gear shift lever insert, rubber insert, which again saves uh, your shoes from all that the uh, marks that you get with the stock rubber uh, shift uh, lever insert that's really low quality stuff pathetic stuff so get yourself an insert and you will not have any stains uh, come up on your shoe as you can see nothing there what else what else i've managed to get out of the evap system and uh, the bike's a whole uh, i mean it's a totally different machine after you get rid of that clogging shitty uh, system that uh, uh, it comes with from the factory and uh, one last bit I have uh, I have uh, liquid molly um, um, brake oil inside a dot four uh, slightly oh, hopefully slightly better quality than the stock um, brake fluid um, I have uh, what else do I have I have uh, mortal uh, 20w um, fork oil which again stiffens the suspension a bit I mean you have slower rebound after the swap and then again this is only if you guys want to load your machine fully and you also want to do off-road like I do uh, only then only then this will come in handy otherwise you'll find that the bike has become a lot more like a street bike and will be too stiff to ride on or ride with so uh, go ahead and swap to a higher viscous oil or a more uh, thicker oil only if you want to do uh, fully loaded um, dirt riding again if you want to play with the heights of the oil uh, level as well you can do that I mean you can have a 20 weight and slowly kind of uh, reduce the uh, quantity instead of 460 455 ml you can have a 435 440 ml and that'll that'll definitely help with uh, the rebound quicker rebound but if you go 455 or 450 ml uh, 20 W uh, viscosity then you can uh, know for a fact that this is going to be slower rebound so you will go flying through all sorts of terrain uh, but you will have that stiff suspension. It will be more like the KTM Adventure 390 suspension. I have gone four, five steps or four steps or five steps on the preload of the rear shock again to accommodate a pillion and all this luggage. And once I get back home, I'm definitely going to, keep, to get it back to two steps preload. So that's how it is. You have the preload settings for things like this. Uh, well, I think that sums it up, guys. I have managed to, I believe I've managed to talk about all the bits and pieces that I've done to the motorcycle. And this is the fully loaded Himalayan. This motorcycle has been going on and on and on for nearly 28,000 kilometers now. And I just love it. This is my... Mm, I think my first motorcycle, I've owned about 25 motorcycles, this is my first motorcycle that I've managed to put so many miles on with the pillion and uh, this thing, if there's anyone out there who thinks this machine can't take it, you guys are extremely mistaken, the only problem with Royal Enfields is that you know you have to have a lot of maintenance going, it's because these things, the way they are assembled, that's where the problem lies. The assembly part of it is where the issue is. It's not the components, it's not the quality of the components. Yes, of course, there's a lot of uh, uh, debate on the components, uh, components and the quality, but I don't want to get into that is because I am paying only so little for so much. And I am uh, more than grateful for the fact that I could buy a fantastic uh, ADV motorcycle uh, to a point where I could call it a dual sport also this fellow can it's just not fast enough but it can take on pretty much anything any terrain and I love it for that that one quality alone extremely versatile machine more like a, a Range Rover I would say 
you know it can just take on anything and there will be a uh, nut and bolt that will come loose and this and that and all that jazz but all that can be fixed and managed if if you just if you're just willing to commit to it it's extremely easy to work on everything is outside visible for you dismantling the whole machine or in the uh, right like right here in the middle of nowhere i have a toolkit here and I have a toolkit inside my bag, the smaller one and the bigger one. With these two, I can completely strip the motorcycle down right here and put it back together. It's as simple as that. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to, to do, do all that. My whole channel is dedicated to this, this topic about of how to go about fixing things. Uh, if uh, Or how to go about troubleshooting or how to go about maintaining so that you don't have to fix it in the middle of nowhere like this. So, yep. A big big fan of the Himalayan <laughs> so uh, that's the mods video hopefully you liked it if you did like the video kindly give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I shall continue to make um, videos on the Himalayan and a lot more of touring traveling tripping and God knows what any which ways let's see where the channel takes us or how it evolves with time so leave it a big thumbs up and uh, continue supporting thank you for your time thank you for uh, watching this is ben and ashi signing out for now ashi